Leo, no matter what happens, live nobly and with pride. If you do that, you'll surely be able to go to heaven. I wonder if my mother, who always used to tell me that, did indeed go to heaven in the end. Although she lived at the bottom rung of society, she lived with a pride that she never lost over the whole course of her life. But while that may be true, being so, especially being so, no, rather because she was so, I do not think she obtained a ticket to heaven. I don't think so. She was noble, proud, as well as pure, righteous, and beautiful, and actually even goddess-like. But at the same time, she was a hopelessly foolish woman. I hated that hopeless foolishness. Take this, for example. While we were so impoverished, we were worried about eating meals that day, while both she and I, her son, were in an environment where we suffered from having empty stomachs. She shared the paltry sum of money she had worked to earn with hungry children in the neighborhood. And not just children, with elderly people or sometimes animals. She gave charity and blessings to such weaklings like it was her duty. What's the word? Kindness. She would scatter that sort of thing freely to those around her. What was that if not foolish? One can't help but hate it. Her way of life where she would put herself as well as her family second was certainly noble and proud, but in that bottom rung town, there was no one to assess that nobility and pride. Depending on the place, like where the Joe Star family lived, that sort of idyllic country town, such character would be reasonably recognized. But in that town, that was worse than a ditch. To be honest, she was a laughingstock. The children who took her charity as well as the elderly people all laughed at Mother. They roared with laughter like they were seeing a fairly entertaining, hilarious joke being played. And when I heard that laughter, I didn't really have much animosity towards it. They were absolutely right, I thought. Enough so that I wanted to laugh right along with them. My anger towards my mother took precedence, so I, of course, didn't do so. But that's to the degree that I felt so. My mother was foolish, helplessly foolish. Be that as it may, as you might expect, being the son of the mother who was being made fun of, I was sometimes looked down on, and I couldn't just let those people that were laughing at my mother get away with it. But when I did that, my mother scolded me. Rather than the ones that were laughing at her, she would scold me that got angry. You mustn't do that, Dio. You must not live relying on violence like that. If you do such things, you will not go to heaven. Thinking back on it, it was like it was her favorite phrase. Words themselves have concrete meanings. Maybe they were something like an incantation. Her simply saying those things left an impression on me. She need only to say the word heaven and it felt like she might be saved. I had to think that, because otherwise that woman's feelings were completely incomprehensible to me. No, even if I did think that, understandably she was undoubtedly impossible to understand. But thinking back on it now, I feel that it probably brought a reasonable amount of light into her life in which she was constantly laughed at. But anyhow, she, my mother, took every opportunity to say that to me as a young child. If you do this, you can go to heaven. If you do that, you can't go to heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. And every time it irritated me. My childhood mind learned severe irritation. I thought of them as irrational words. I couldn't forgive my mother. That's why whenever I would see my drunken father commit violence against my mother, it actually made me feel relieved. Serves you right, I thought. Think about it now, it seems rather foolish, but as a young child, I liked my father more than my mother. I felt my low-life, insignificant, hopeless father was far better than my noble, proud mother. If my mother was a giver, 
or perhaps a donor, then I think I could say my father was a taker. Thinking back on my connection with the Joestar family, a fated connection spanning over 100 years, his habit of stealing may have been the impetus. What he took from George Joestar was the cause. I never once saw him work. I never saw him work or earn anything for himself. Through random gambling, swindle-like acts, and extortion, he took cash and food from people in town. He never earned, he only took. He was always doing that. The way he lived his life up until his death was the exact opposite of my mother's. And that town, the one that was right, was my father. My father's way of living was honest and correct, at the very least. I thought the way my father lived so uninhibited and cunningly was cool. I wouldn't say I looked up to him, but I would say I respected him. It really does seem foolish looking back on it now, but I was not in my proper senses. And I thought of the way he lived as very skillful. He was always taking from the weak and in response to necessity, or even not in response to necessity, he would beat other people. For me, a still innocent child, no one could be stronger. I watched him. He was strong, stylish, and cool. In that broken down slum of a town, knowing that my father was such a person was my life's greatest and my life's only pride. But my mother repudiated that. She downright criticized it. Dear, please stop. Let's give back all the money you stole. You mustn't do these things. If you do things like this, you won't be able to go to heaven. Whenever she said that, she got hit. A foolish woman got foolishly beaten. When she collapsed, he would violently kick her and throw liquor bottles at her. I only found out about it later, but my little brother, or little sister that could have been, was lost to that violence, apparently. It's a cruel story. It's a cruel story, isn't it? It surely is. But among that daily violence, she was forthright to the end. In that life at the bottom rung of society, in that terrible environment, she talked about justice, ethics, and morals. She held dearly those things that serve no purpose like they were treasures. I wish she'd have just shut up. At the least, I wish she'd have overlooked my father's actions. If she'd have just done that, she would have at least escaped his violence. No. When I think of my father and his drunken frenzies, you probably couldn't escape completely no matter what you did. But when I was a child, in an attempt to do that, I would stay quiet and get away from him when he drank. And that would minimize the amount of damage I received. A child could figure that out. But she never did. Quite the opposite. When my father drank heavily and got drunk off his ass, she remonstrated him. You mustn't drink so much liquor and the like. She would say obvious things like that. She would get hit and say obvious things. What exactly was going to come from saying things like that? If you thought about it, it should have been easy to figure out. Seeing her try to talk to my father despite the fact that she did nothing to defend herself from being beaten couldn't be expressed as anything but humorous. It's strange. I cannot help but question it. Even if she couldn't escape the scorn, she should have at least been able to escape the violence. So why didn't she? Is it as I thought she was simply foolish? Because she wasn't smart? Was my mother really a hopeless idiot? That is wrong. Now that 100 years have passed, I know that is wrong. Now that I know the so-called outside world and the next world, it's true that my mother at least had intelligence and education. Even while in poverty, where I could not go to school often, the one that taught me various things in a place of a teacher was none other than her. It is because I had the basic education that I was able to live with such determination later. I never once thanked my mother for that while she was alive. Though, I didn't think that such an education could serve any purpose. But if it weren't for that, I seriously doubt I could have lived at that refined Joestar home. 
I never cared for my mother's bloodline. But when I did investigate, I found that that woman may have actually come from the upper echelons of society. If I'm allowed to say something a bit prejudiced, her refinement and dignity and that piety of hers were at the very least not born out of poverty. They must have been things born out of a life of luxury. But why would such a woman marry that father, or why would she fall into this miserable town? I cannot call anything but mysteries. Speaking of which, my father once taught me something while drunk, something about eloping with my mother, and how's that for love and romance, and some worthless drivel like that. I dismissed it as drunken nonsense, but I don't know whether or not it was actually true. I ignored it as it seemed like an incredibly hard story to swallow. But although I cannot confirm it is true, it may not have been nonsense either. Perhaps that father of mine said something truthful, though there's no way to find out now. Dio, don't blame your father. Your father is really a kind person. He just shouldn't drink. If he'd only quit drinking, I'm sure your father would work diligently. Now that was nonsense, I thought. My mother said such things to me with a serious look on her face. It took all I had not to cry out against that. I wanted to ask her how she could possibly be so foolish. He's really a kind person. If only he'd stop drinking. How or where could you look, or in what way could you explain it, in order to think in such a way? All I could think was that my mother had lost her mind from being beaten too much. If one assumed that, one could even say that they were actually a very well-matched couple. But really, no matter how you thought about it, they were an incredibly mismatched couple. Despite living as the wife of that low-life father, for my mother, who made it a principle to do good, who aimed to go to heaven, must have been tantamount to torture. Or perhaps for her, that was the most charitable thing she could do. Perhaps she thought that getting close to that father of mine, to remain married to him for life, was a mission given to her by God. Something along those lines. It's an audacious hypothesis I have no basis for, but unless I think it was something like that, I really can't understand it. Her life was too incomprehensible. She was the laughing stock of the town, but she still tried to help him. She was beaten bloody by him, but she still tried to serve that father of mine. Every day, she worked to the brink of collapse, and seeing as one day she really did collapse and passed away, I really can't understand her. In the end, I wonder if she did get to heaven. I don't think she did. Surely she couldn't go anywhere. She had nowhere to arrive at. And nowhere to go back to.